you are so proud to the point that you know that you are not anywhere but then you are up there the healing you emoji man of god you're like oh that's me that's me you are so up there my dear bring down your shoulder and be uh, uh, bring down that shoulder so you can get something from persons who are meant to bless your life hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Lawson Bakuri, if you see me for the first time, and today I'll be discussing something really interesting, amazing, educative, and also spiritual. Yes, yeah, seven things you do that affect your spiritual growth. But please, if you have not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified of all amazing videos I post per week. And to my returning subscribers, oh, thank you so much. I love you. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and do everything beautiful because every single video I post per week will be great to your life in general. Have you heard about spiritual junks? Well, this is the number one on our list. Spiritual junks, just like normal junks in the real life, actually makes you fat. Now, the difference is that this, what are spiritual junks, first of all? Spiritual junks are anything you take that ordinarily they are not spiritual things, but they're not wrong either. But then, excessive intake of those things will actually lead to a fatness in your spirit, and sometimes it will hinder the growth of your spirituality. Now, what are the things that fall under the category of spiritual junks? We have number one, we have movies fall under category of spiritual jumps we have some kind of songs we have excessive um, uh, uh, or um, discussion that are not really important and some other minor secular random stops now we a person that want to grow spiritually you might not even know but you have the habit of always watching movies some of you want to watch korean movie from morning to night sometimes you can even spend like eight to nine hours watching a particular movie and then these are different things movie shows and some other stuff that you do that might necessarily not even be uh, um, really spiritual stuff but then they have a way of eating into your time and eating into your ability spirituality takes time when you give your spiritual life time you give it ability to grow now when you spend all your time watching movie or doing some random stuff that uh, 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 forms a, a, a sphere of spiritual junks in your life you realize that you end up accumulating things that will affect the growth of your spirituality and then you end up going through the same rigorous complaint of i'm not growing spiritually my life is not increasing i'm still at the spot why because you have intentionally accumulated all these things. Now, if you really want to get rid of spiritual junk, it's going to take a lot of discipline for you to get rid of spiritual junk. Those things that are not actually contributing to your spirituality, maximally, rather they are only increasing or emphasizing on your own personal flesh and or personal desires. They are increasing your desires or, 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 or building strength to your personal flesh or to your flesh rather. Those things made up or are things called spiritual junk. And you have to get rid of them because spiritual junk contribute intentionally to making you grow lesser spiritually and number two are comparison and pressure when you have the weird habit of always saying okay i'll compare yourself with another person like you see on the road of spiritual journey eh? you and someone you don't in any competition no? let me say you think you are in a competition with the person and you're like okay this person prays for three hours this person prays for four hours this person prays two hours daily and all of that all this person pray, it, it is i'm not saying it's wrong to actually have motivations from persons and all of that but when you have the intentions of always being in a competition with another now when you are competing with people over things that are unnecessary or over spiritual journeys that doesn't even intentionally affect you now a spiritual journey is a personal decision when you have the weird habit of always comparing persons you will tend to live your life based on the pattern and standard being set by those persons now those persons spirituality becomes a regulatory force over your own spirituality you realize that you will not grow at all why? Because if you're a person who is just beginning to learn spirituality and you're setting goals or keeping yourself in a, in, in a place where you physically or where, um, 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 let me just use the word, where naturally seems impossible for you. You've never started 30 minutes prayer per day. You want to start six hours prayer stretch every day. Where you know personally it is impossible. You know that you cannot keep up to this. You realize that your spirituality will not grow because you put yourself under unnecessary pressure, which makes you have the innate desire or innate ability to think that spirituality is difficult thereby limiting your ability so please stop the unnecessary comparison these are things you do and it affects your spiritual growth because you have not been dedicated to what your abilities can carry you end up comparing yourself and trying to do what you cannot do and then you realize that you end up not even doing anything at all and you are down there at a spot okay so please stop the unnecessary comparison if you want to grow spiritually or less you will grow lesser spiritually 
That next thing is you are in love with activities and not spirituality. A lot of you are in love with activities. You want to go out there, you want to be seen out there, you want to be pastored out there, you want to do a lot of things out there. But meanwhile, you are not even in the main spiritual game. You are up there in different places, not in spiritual game. No, the activities does not make you spiritual. What makes you spiritual is your ability in the sacred place. That is what makes you spiritual. Now, most of you make the mistake of thinking that the number of time you come to church, the number of time you engage in other spiritual functions, attend prayer programs and everything is what actually makes you spiritual. Now that's something fair to understand that the same energy you pray in a group prayer program is not the same energy you take to pray in your personal prayer life. Why? Because when you are in a group place, it's something called group energy or a congregational anointing. Now this thing carries you all along and then you feel like, ah, I am flowing, I'm moving and all of that. And all of a sudden you realize that you are not even flowing. When you come to personal secret place, you are drowning and you are down. Why? Because you have failed to grow your personal secret place. You are out there on the mountain, out there in different programs, different locations, not even growing, rather expanding capacities where there is non-existent capacity. So I will, I will beg you, pitch down a lot of the activity. Learn to grow individually. Learn to start building yourself personally. But it is not. I'm not saying it is wrong to go on activities. I'm not saying it's wrong to go attend programs and functions. But learn to pitch down. You don't be a jack of all trades, a master of none. Learn to what pitch down. Bring back your tent and get something from God. All right. Pitch down your tent, like I said, there were, and get something from God. Because when you begin to grow spiritually, personally, those activities you begin to also the things you get from the activities will help you to even increase your spiritual abilities. But when your spiritual life individually is lacking in terms of growth, those other activities you attend will not even make any meaningful impact in your life. You end up getting something and then losing it. It becomes like the um, the parable of the uh, uh, um, of the of the seed. Yes, and the sun will fall on the very very ground because you have. On, you have been unable to bear fruit or you are unfruitful you realize that it is impossible for you to bear fruit okay and the next one on our list is spiritual pretense yes spiritual pretense a lot of you are, I, I don't even really know what it, what why you intend to pretend spiritually you know you are not growing spiritually but you are portraying outside there that you are so spiritually high that is totally wrong that, that is that i will call i call that at the height of spiritual stupidity when you portray what you are not in terms of spirituality you are highly spiritually stupid now you have to be who you are it is it is it is not wrong to want to get help spiritually when when you know that something is going wrong it's not wrong to want to get help there are a lot of persons out there that god has positioned that are out there that would want to help you but our problem is we feel we know it all we feel we are good enough we feel we have expanded enough that the persons god has kept for us to become our leaders end up becoming our sons and daughters may we not turn our destiny helpers to become our own uh, 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 how help us we will not begin to help our destiny help us now what i mean is this you need to stop this spiritual pretense you need to realize that it is okay for for you sometimes to shake and then look for help and let the person to help you out stop pretending to be who you are not most of us end up pretending or or, 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 or give a picture of spirituality that is non-existent. You are out there pretending to be a pastor when you know that you are struggling with something. It is not a, this is not a time. The time this, this is end time. It's not a time for you to begin to try to cover up your sin. He that covers up his sins shall not what prosper. This is not a time for that. This spiritual pretense will not help you. Rather, it will just decrease your abilities and will only keep you at a spot and you will not be growing. Now, instead of pretending. To be who you are not spiritually why not come out with who you are and get help to become the person you, you, you want to be now the more reason you are pretending spiritually is because you and i know you are not satisfied with your present spiritual capacity now why not come out openly meet the person that have gone ahead of you and let the person help you out into becoming the right person you want to be than pretending to be who you are not spiritually because that would only affect your ability i realize that you are not making any positive good year by year you remain where you are why because you are only seeing a future you desire but i've not gotten the, the, the enough courage to walk into that particular reality instead you pretend to the reality and that will only harm you and will not allow you to grow spiritually so if you are there you are on a journey or on the life of constant pretending spiritually i beg you in the name of god do not continue in that life because that would never help you that next on the list is pride ah 
a you people will say a cool girl. A lot of you, a lot of you are proud, like proud girl. You are so proud to the point that you know that you are not anywhere, but then you are up there. The hell you emoji, man of God, you're like, oh, that's me, that's me. You are so up there, my dear. Bring down your shoulder and be, uh, uh, bring down that shoulder so you can get something from persons who are meant to bless your life. A lot of you are so proud. You are so proud, like to the point that you. You, you you even become so proud of, for persons who are meant to help you. Now, that see, you see in this picture, there are persons who have been strategically positioned to save your life, to help you grow spiritually. But when you become so proud, when you begin to carry yourself, so when you are, when you become unteachable, some of you are not unteachable. To me, if you are unteachable, some of you are not. Uh, uh, how do I put it? You don't have the ability to want to learn. When you have become so proud that you don't want to learn, I'm telling you, a person that do not want to learn is a person that will never grow. When you feel you now know it all, you are now the pasty, the MOG. It doesn't matter the person that God has positioned to teach you. This person might not be brilliant new, but God has a grace upon the person to teach you. The person might not even know how to control good English. The person might not even be big. The person might be very, very short. The person might even be your junior, like three years below. But then, what matters is the grace of God upon that person's life. And if you can honor that grace, you will learn something from that person. Yes, there is no need to be proud. See, spiritual. Spiritual abilities has nothing to do with individual differences. Yes, because it is like we call it spiritual, right? It is spiritual because it is not regulated by man. God can bestow spiritual powers on someone who is very little. God can bestow spiritual abilities on someone who is very tiny. Now it is now you who is the person that God has kept to learn something from that person to keep your ego cool to keep your pride down and learn something and learn there is no need to always raise that shoulder because when you raise shoulder for your somebody who is meant to grow you spiritually you realize that you will never grow when you begin to call somebody who is meant to help you to grow spiritually your son then you will remain where you are when you when you have that weird habit of always bringing persons down because if you are high you end up not even getting to that height you think you have attained let's not deceive ourselves pride goes what before a fall you see in spirituality the number one key to maximum growth is humility. Now the next thing again is lack of practice. Spirituality is practice. Practicing what you are learning. When the Holy Spirit is teaching you things and you are not practicing, I'm telling you my dear, you will remain where you are. What makes you expand in growth is practice. When you are beginning to learn something from your secret place and you begin to put it into practice, you will begin to grow. When the Lord is teaching you in the pattern of spiritual understanding and you begin to learn to teach other persons those understanding, you begin to expand and come into that realm. When the Lord is teaching you a pattern, a pattern as regards to um, 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 the study of the word of God or as regards to evangelism and you don't go out there to evangelize, I'm telling you, you will remain at that point of not even knowing how to evangelize. When the Lord is teaching you as regards to um, um, the infill of the Holy Spirit and you don't go out there and few persons, you will never learn or come into that particular realm and abilities. When the Lord is teaching you something as regards to um, you know what will I use now? Okay. As regards to healing, miracles, and you don't go out there and look for the sick and lay hands on them and, and get them healed, you would never walk into that particular ability and you will remain at this point. So please, spirituality entails practice. When you want to keep growing spiritually, you have to learn to begin to practice what the Lord is teaching you, practice what the spirituality is open for you, practice what, what the Holy Spirit is, is convicting you. Practice, 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 practice. You can't keep teaching what you have not encountered. You can't keep eh, 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 talking to persons of what you have not embraced. So you have to practice, embrace it so you can teach it. Amen. I believe someone is getting something already. Praise the Lord. Now the last thing is lack of patience. Some of you are so eager to be on the podium. If, if you must lead, then you must learn. A leader must first be a servant. You don't lead into leadership. You serve to your way top. You serve to the top. You serve into leadership. That is why you don't come to a generation and automatically they make you the leader. You serve to the way. You serve to the top. Now, some of you lack that patience. There are podiums you will never climb until you become a servant. Some of you lack the patience to grow. You just want to be out there. You don't even want to grow spiritually. You lack the patience. Be patient with God. In the secret place, there is no time. Time does not exist in the realm of the spirit. Be patient with God and let God breathe you into becoming the right person he wants you to be. Be patient. Come gradually so you can learn. Come gradually, gradually, and you learn from God. Show me a man that is patiently waiting on God to learn. And I will show you a man 
who God is going to announce, who God is going to use, who God is going to establish into becoming the right person for his generation. When you are not patient, you become a half-baked, half-cooked bread. And God can never announce a person that is half-cooked. Now you have to patiently wait on God to renew your strength. Yes, patient is the virtue, patient is the key. If you are not patient, then you cannot grow spiritually because you will jump out of the secret place. And when you jump out of the secret place, you will never have what it takes to portray the secret place to other persons. I want to believe someone was blessed for this particular video. Thank you so much for watching this video. But before we, let us pray. But I thank you for this particular person. I want to believe this video will open the dimension of spiritual growth. That particular person that has been stagnant for years, right now I pray for you. No more stagnancy in your life in the name of Jesus. I cancel every stagnancy upon your life and I declare you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this very amazing video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And to my returning subscribers, thank you so much. You are my encouragement. You are the reason why I'm still doing this. Thank you so much. I love you. Don't forget to like this video, comment, share to every single platform you can share. Because every single video I post, I believe will be blessing you. It's not my my power. God has been doing it. I'm going to keep on blessing you. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you. And I love you. Come back every week for more amazing video I post.